Hello everyone, for today's video lecture we're going to be talking about moments of inertia via composite parts and the parallel axis theorem. Uh, so as an alternative to the use of integration uh, for finding the area or mass moments of inertia, we can use lookup tables uh, along with the parallel axis theorem to find a combined moment of inertia uh, for any composite body. So in this way we can skip the integration uh, instead using the works of others as a shortcut uh, for this method. Uh, and this is similar to how we found the centroid or center of mass via composite bodies. All right, so the overall process is as follows. Uh, number one, we're going to break our composite shape or volume down into simple shapes or volumes that are in the lookup tables. Uh, we're going to look up moments of inertia for each individual shape using the moment of inertia tables. We're going to use the parallel axis theorem to adjust the moments of inertia uh, about a common origin point. And finally, we're going to add the adjusted moments of inertia together to find the overall moment of inertia for our combined shape. All right, so step one. Uh, in finding this, we need to break our complex shape down into uh, simple shapes that are in our table. Uh, so holes and cutouts can be negative areas or masses. Uh, and it's also useful to identify the axes or origin point uh, at this point. So our shape number one, the one on the left here, uh, is an area. And so for example, I might take this area and say, all right, part of that is shape number one, which is a semicircle. Uh, shape number two, which it looks like a square. And then shape number three, I've cut a corner or a triangle off of that square. So the semicircle, the rectangle, and the triangle are all in my table. So all of those are valid uh, pieces. And it is important to note, so shape three there is a cutout that counts as a negative area in this case. Uh, for my volume over here, I've got a cone uh, on top of a cylinder. I've got a cone and a cylinder available in my moment of inertia table. So that would be the two composite pieces of my body. Uh, so that's gonna be step number one. Step number two, we're gonna create a table to keep track of various values that we're gonna be using. Uh, so this is an example of a table that I would use to find uh, the overall area moment of inertia about the x and y axes for this particular shape. Uh, so each row is going to be used for a part of the composite body. So however many shapes you broke your body into, in this case I had uh, three different composite pieces. And so I've got three different rows uh, as well as a, a total uh, row at the bottom is going to be useful as well. Uh, and the columns are going to vary from problem to problem, but generally they're going to follow the format shown below. So step number one, we're going to have the area for area moments of inertia or the mass for mass moments of inertia. We're going to have some centroid locations. So X bar and Y bar in this case. Uh, if I have a 3D problem, I might have a Z bar in there as well. Uh, and next up, I'm going to have the X and Y moments of inertia about the centroid. This is what I would look up in my table. Uh, this R is an adjustment distance. We're going to talk a little bit more about that later. And then these are the adjusted moments of inertia. So I'm going to use this adjustment factor uh, to get a moment of inertia about a combined centroid of the shape. All right, so this is filling out this table is going to be most of the work for the method of composite parts. All right, so after determining the mass or area of each piece, uh, next step is to find the centroid location of each piece as well as the overall centroid location. So I'm not going to go over how to do this in detail. Uh, there is another page on finding the uh, centroid of a body with the method of composite parts, uh, which is going to be kind of part of the method that we're going to use here. So we're generally going to be taking the overall moment of inertia about the overall centroid location of our composite body. So we will need to know that location. Uh, and even if you're given the overall centroid location, uh, we're still going to need to know the centroid location for each individual piece. So all of these centroid locations should be with respect to a common axis that we have in our problem, uh, the one that we identified earlier when we put together the drawing. All right, so next we're going to look up and calculate the moments of inertia from individual centroids. So be sure to adjust for orientation uh, to match what's in the table to your situation. So for example, uh, shape number one over here, that was our semicircle. And if I look up the semicircle in my moment of inertia table, this is what I have. Uh, so you'll notice that the semicircle in the table 
is rotated 90 degrees from what we have in our actual situation. So in this case, I would actually need to switch Ix and Iy. Um, so the Ixx and Iyy uh, would be switched. So Ixx in this case would be pi over eight times the radius to the fourth, and Iyy would be pi over eight times eight ninth or eight over nine pi radius to the fourth. So I switch these two values because it's rotated there. All right, so that's what's going to go in our Ixx and Iyyc uh, columns for our table is the kind of calculations we get from the table. All right, so next up, we're going to talk about the parallel axis theorem. So we'll eventually be adding together all of the moments of inertia of the individual pieces. But what we have now is a problem. So each shape has its moment of inertia about a given point. Uh, and as we've discussed earlier, we cannot the moment of inertia is dependent on the point we take. So if we calculate the moment at about a different point, we get a different moment of inertia. So if all of the moments of inertia are taken about the same point, generally the combined centroid or center of mass, then we can add them together. So we're gonna to need to take what we have and adjust it for a different location uh, because the centroid of a piece is not the centroid of the entire composite body. All right, so parallel axis theorem states that Ixxp equals Ixxc plus AR squared. Uh, or we're gonna do the same thing, but more or less with mass. Uh, so we have, in this case, the area moment of inertia about any point P is gonna be the area moment about the centroid, that's what we looked up in the table, plus the area times R squared and r is the distance between the two x-axes so if we had i y y be the distance that we're moving the y-axes so same thing down here uh, it's the same except we are going to use the mass for mass moments of inertia rather than area all right so that is the formula we're adding on this a r squared or m r squared term uh, to adjust our moment of inertia and the R value represents the distance that we need to move or adjust uh, to get to the new centroid point. So say this black dot uh, is my centroid of the overall piece, uh, and I've got a Y axis coming up out of that. Uh, the R or the adjustment factor would be the following. So for shape one, well, like the centroid of my semicircle is about there, and I did figure out how far am I moving the Y axis. Uh, for IYY adjustment. Uh, shape number two would be something else. So the center of the rectangle, how far am I moving that from Y2 to YC? And then finally, my, tri uh, my triangle over there, uh, how far am I adjusting that? And so R3 uh, is moving to the left as well. So it's a bigger value. So uh, the area for this last one, since point three is a cutout, it's a negative area, so it's going to be a um, plus AR squared, but A is a negative number. So it's essentially minus AR squared for this particular uh, adjustment. All right, so that is one thing. And we, it is important to determine how far the axis has moved. So uh, this is what trips a lot of people up. Um, so say where you're moving from point C to point P. Um, C is the centroid of my piece. P is the overall centroid. Uh, how far I move the x-axis would be kind of this vertical distance here. How far I move the y-axis is a, actually a horizontal distance here. Uh, if I'm doing the moment of inertia about the z-axis, which would be pointing out of the page, that would be the diagonal. So regardless of direction, we count the direction, or what, regardless of the direction, we count the distance as positive. So that r is squared, it doesn't really matter anyway. Um, you just need to know how far the axis is gonna be moving. All right, so once you've figured out your R values, how far each of those uh, axes is gonna be moving, and if you've got, if you're figuring out uh, Ixx and Iyy, you'd have R values for the X axes and R values for the Y axes as well. Uh, we're gonna adjust each piece. So Ixx adjusted, that's our Ixxp, is gonna be what we calculated earlier for the Ixx about the centroid, plus this AR squared term. Uh, and same thing for the y-axis. We're going to have a IYYC, which is from our table, 
plus a r y squared. So how far are we moving the y axis in each of those cases? All right, so the adjusted of, uh, moments of inertia can be added up. Uh, so we simply add i x x for the first piece, i x x for the second piece, i x x for the third piece uh, of those adjusted values. And that sum is going to be the overall moment of inertia. So if you go back to our table, uh, these adjusted values, we'd simply add up 1, 2, and 3 to get the total value over here. Same thing, 1, 2, 3, add those three pieces to get the IYY total. All right, so that's all I have for today's video lecture. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you again.